In this tutorial, I'm going to walk through the process of georeferencing a map using the Map Cruncher software. This example follows Geospatial Lab 3.1 in your textbook. So I'm going to work with the campus map of Youngstown State University, um, but you'll also need to do the same steps to do the assignment using the Salem State Campus University map. So the Geospatial Lab 3.1 instructions in the module section in Canvas uh, basically repeat the instructions in the textbook except that I provide the updated link to the software that you'll need as well as a link to the image of the campus map that you'll use. So the link to the software gives you a link to, the, to download the Map Cruncher software which works only on Windows systems so if you have a Mac unfortunately it's not going to work um, but we do have it loaded already in the lab in the DGL. Once you've downloaded and installed the software, you can open it up from the Start menu. Before we do that, let's make sure that we also have the image that we're going to use. So there's a PDF version of the map, um, but that can be a little quirky. So we're going to use a JPEG image of the same map of the Youngstown State University campus. So this link over here will give you that map that you're going to need. So I'm just going to show it to you really quickly. So this is what it looks like. It's, it's tilted. Uh, right now, but we're going to fix that when we do the georeferencing. So you want to download this image onto your computer wherever you're working. And the safest thing to do is to save it onto your desktop and to create a separate folder for this assignment. So I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. I'm going to call it YSU map. And then I'm going to save the image in that folder. Okay, And that's important because we're going to save all of the work that we do in Map Cruncher into the same folder. So I have my image, it's on my desktop, I've downloaded and installed Map Cruncher, and I'm going to start up the software now. So there we go, Map Cruncher Beta for Microsoft Virtual Earth. And when you open up the software, you're going to see a blank gray area on the left, and then you're going to see this virtual earth over here on the right. This is kind of uh, like Google Maps. This is Microsoft's version called Bing Maps. It's essentially the same thing. If you get closer, you'll see real-time maps of different parts of the world. We're going to use this to georeference our map. So the first thing we need to do is to go to the File menu and add the source map, which will be that Youngstown map that we just downloaded. So you'll need to navigate to the folder. In this case, it's already, it's already found it. But just to show you, it's at the it's on my desktop in the YSU folder. So I'm going to select that map and add it and it appears on the left hand side. Okay, now here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find places on the map image over here on the left that correspond with locations on real places on the earth which is on the right hand side in the Bing Maps map. So the first thing we want to do is we want to zoom into that area uh, well we want to zoom to Youngstown State University on the right hand map. So if you already know where that's it, that that's at, you can move the map around until it falls roughly under the crosshairs, and you can start to zoom in to that location. Now the nice thing is you've already been given the coordinates. So if you look up under the virtual Earth position, you can actually just type in the latitude and longitude. So I've already the, the book gives you the latitude and longitude, so we can just put that in there so that we don't have to wander around. Right. And once it's in there, it's positioned and you can just simply zoom in. And as you get closer, you'll see more details. You can see Youngstown right there in the center of the map. And as we get closer, you can see the urban area resolve itself. And we get close enough, we start to see Youngstown State University. And now we're getting close to what it is that we need. Okay. On the left-hand side, you can zoom in as well to see a little better. You can start, in particular, you weren't looking for streets that we can see and we can see streets that correspond in the two. Now the two images, the one on the left being the Youngstown State map um, is just an image. That's all it is at the moment. Um, the image on the right is not an image, it's actually a map that has real locations tied to it um, and we're trying to figure out where the two match up and so we're going to lay down these corresponding points in both sides that allow us to to basically translate these locations into real places for the map. So the first thing we want to do is find something on the virtual earth that also matches on the map. So the easiest thing to do is to find intersections that are clearly labeled. 
So I'm going to go with the easiest one right off the bat here. I'm going to see, I see Wick Avenue. It seems like a large street. And it seems to intersect with a highway, 422. So I'm going to move, I'm going to click and drag the virtual uh, earth so that the crosshairs falls right at the intersection of Wick Avenue and that highway. And then over here on the map side, I'm going to drag the map until I can find the same basic location on Wick Avenue, although it's kind of hard because the map is oriented in, uh, in a way that makes it a little hard to read, but it'll fix itself later. So Wick Avenue, and there we go, there's 422. I'm going to position it right smack in the middle. Okay, it's close as I can get. It looks like they're in the same basic location. And then over here on the far left, I'm going to hit the Add button. And it's going to lay down correspondence, uh, zero. Right? So there's one here, one here. Hopefully those are matching locations. Okay, so now we need to find a few more locations. And the way this works, we want to find probably at least five or six places uh, on the two, on the two uh, maps uh, that are corresponding before we try to do the actual geo... Uh, referencing. So I'm going to stay on Wick Avenue because that seems the easiest thing to do. So I'm going to move down Wick Avenue um, until I get to, let's see, let's look for another intersection. Here's Lincoln Avenue right there. All right, Wick and Lincoln right there. Okay, so over here I'm doing the same thing. I'm scrolling in the map trying to find the corresponding, there it is, yeah, you can see, oops, position the crosshairs at Wick and Lincoln. And again, add a point. All right. And let's stay on Lincoln. And let's see. Let's go down Lincoln all the way to Fifth Avenue. So Lincoln's right there. All right. So here, you can see the bend in the road that's 5th Avenue that kind of sort of might seem a little tough here because the intersection is not entirely clear. Try to get in the center as, as much as possible. And I'll add a point there. And then we need to add a few more points. So now let's travel up 5th Avenue. Okay, and let's see. Fifth and Scott looks like a good location. So over here, there's Fifth and Scott. Add the point. Now, as you're doing this, you'll notice that on the left-hand side, the correspondences are being numbered in sequential order, and locations being recorded. And that should look; those numbers should look somewhat familiar. Those are the latitudes, and the three dots indicate there's more numbers. And in fact, if you hold your cursor over the number, you'll see the full coordinate of that location. And essentially what's going on is that um, you're basically trying to translate the um, image coordinates, which are random, to the map, or rather arbitrary, not random, and translate them into these numbers, into latitude and longitude. We don't have to worry about it too much because that kind of goes on behind the scenes, but essentially that's what you're trying to do, to translate the space of the image into the space that we, we know on the Earth of latitude and longitude. Okay, so we need a couple more locations. So we got Fifth Avenue and Scott last. So let's go somewhere in the middle of the campus. Now what we're trying to do here, I do actually have a method to what I'm doing. You're trying to spread out the points. You don't want them all concentrated in one um, part of the of the image because what's going to happen when you do the rendering it's going to um, it's going to affect the quality of the georeferencing. So I'm going to find this uh, dead end right here at Elm Street. You'll see that ends right here at this building. So I'm going to find that over here. Okay, looks about right there. Yep, you can see Elm, Elm, add a point there. All right. And now we can check on the quality of our georeferencing as we go. And the way that you do that is you click on the lock button. And the lock button will reorient the map on the left to match what we have on the right. And now you can see, if you look closely, they look like they're matching up pretty well. Okay, we can see that Fifth Avenue matches up pretty nicely. You can see Lincoln. Okay, so now they're oriented correctly, and you can zoom out a little bit to see how well they're they're doing. And you'll notice that as you zoom out or zoom in, the two will move together because now they're essentially locked together, and the map is matching as west as best it can to the image. Now over here in the correspondences box, you'll see that there's an error column that now has values in it, 
and these values indicate the level of estimated error so basically the quality of the points that you lay down ideally what we're shooting for are to keep error rates below 10 meters and lower is always better um, the error rate is computed basically by the equation that's created along the when you're laying down these points the equation being uh, an effort to, to translate the positions in the image space into positions in real space going from these units which are probably in inches or centimeters into latitude and longitude and the quality of the points that you lay down affect the quality of the equation and so these errors are derived from that so again we're trying to go for a lower a lower error as possible now what can happen sometimes is that you lay down a point that's not really good and it can throw everything off so let me just illustrate that for a second I'll unlock it again so I can add more points and I'm going to throw down a random point just anywhere and it's completely off and I'll add that point okay and then I'll lock it again okay and now look at that that looks really off you can see it looks a lot more warped like it's stretched and you can look at your errors are horrible right that last one was 319 now if you do that you can always edit it by unlocking it and then removing that offending um, corresponding point okay and then when you relock it you'll see that you're back to what your earlier error was so it's not so bad so that's essentially it you're trying to lay down points to get the match as good as possible so when you think you've laid down enough points to get a good match and again I would suggest at least have five or six points uh, up to ten is probably safe um, that's what you're shooting for